One thing I'd, I'd, I'd love to get your uh, thoughts on, or if we could first just define it and explain it, because I think you're probably in a, in a better position to explain it to people, but the Scottish government's hate crime bill, before we get into that, could you explain just to people who may not be aware what that is and, and what that means? Well, I'm no lawyer, um, so I'm not a, I'm not across the legal minutiae of it. But it basically, it was um, it was it was an attempt to to pull together, I believe, certain disparate uh, uh, laws and uh, and legal paperwork, uh, you know, around uh, dealing with things that were, that were said about people, whether were matters of religion. Uh, matters of sex, matters of uh, sexual orientation, uh, uh, transgender, uh, everything, and and try, trying to pull it all together into one into one place. The the bill was put before was put out there for public uh, debate, as 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 is the case with all of these. You know, before a, before something becomes law, it, you know, it goes through a, a process of being aired and, and debated. And, and that, I, I, it was at that point that I became aware of it because it, the, the propo as it became known, the hate crime bill um, was vilified across the board, and it, it united the strangest bedfellows, you know, you know, people from from the from the church, you know, uh, uh, lawyers for the legal fraternity, um, actors, comedians, authors, uh, all sorts of people were united in confederacy in saying this is badly worded it's too vague um, and it's going to the net effect of it will be to stifle freedom of speech and I thought well anything that, that, that all of those people that otherwise unlikely assemblage of people if, if all of them are agreed that this is bad for freedom of speech then it must surely be bad for freedom of speech and so I started watching it at that point and one of the one of the things that was particularly troubling was this notion of you could be accused of stirring up hatred on racial grounds or on sexual grounds um, and if, if, if I said something or say something in, or write something in, even in London, I could say it in London, but because I, if it was heard in Scotland and, and a complainant was able to allege that, that they were offended by it, or indeed they felt that I was attempting to stir up hatred, then it, the, the, the burden of the obligation would be on, in, in my, on my part to prove that I hadn't meant to do any of that. You know, I would have to. I would have to. The, the burden of proof was mine to show that I hadn't meant to do that which I was accused of doing, rather than being convicted of having done it. It was a prima facie that I had done it. It's, if that, if a person felt offended, then then they were offended, and I had to prove that I hadn't meant to do that. And some of it, some of it came with a, with a maximum term in prison of seven years. Now, as I say, you know, people with more with legal training, which I do not have, would, would be able to give you a more um, legalistic uh, uh, breakdown of why it was problematic. But the fact was that so many different groups spoke at the police. The police were part of saying, we can't police this. You, you, you literally, you, you'd be, you, you'd be, uh, they will be processing al allegations of, of offence and hate you, you know, thousands and thousands every day, p potentially. All you've got to do is phone the police and say that you heard somebody say something and, and it was hateful. But there were even, there were even a, a part of it was that, uh, hypothetically, if I was to say something in my house at the dinner table one night uh, and maybe, maybe one of my children repeated it the next day, someone hearing what I had said in private in my house, I could be, I could be jailed for seven years for something that I said, you know, whatever in private, it, you mm. know, behind closed doors. Wow. But if it was, if it, if word of what I had said got out into the public domain by being repeated by by my child, say, then then that could be enough to see me up in court and and languishing mm. at, at Her Majesty's, you know, pleasure. Mm. Um, and a, a bit of, but it was the fact that so many people, so church bodies, religious groups, uh, the legal profession, the police. Uh, and then all the people from the sort of creative arts, actors, uh, authors, comedians, all these people saying, whoa, wow, you don't want to do this. And I thought, right, that's, that's got to be stopped. But, and I know that the act was amended in certain ways, but the act that has gone forward now, it's been through the consultation process, and the, the act that has gone forward now to, to obtain the royal assent and become law. Gracie, shush. 
the act that has gone forward to be, to be made law uh, is still deeply troubling for all of those aforementioned groups. So although some of it has been amended in some ways, all of the same groups that were troubled by the, the stifling effect that it would have on freedom of speech, uh, they're all, all the same people are, are still carrying all of the same concerns. Yeah, I mean, even though it's, you know, it's confined to Scotland, that it has sort of rung around the, the world. And, and Jordan Peterson uh, described it as a, the watershed moment in the culture wars. What, what do you think he meant by that? Uh, I saw that. I, I, I saw as well, he had tweeted something about, something to the effect of, oh God, no, not Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> I think was his opening segue into that, into that, ter into that territory. I think, you know, obviously a, a place like Britain, let's say, and, you know, and Scotland being a part of Britain, uh, Britain is, has been known around the world as a bastion of uh, uh, freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, tolerance, of, you know, religious tolerance and, and every other sort of tolerance, you know, it's imperfect. But, you know, I, when, I hear, when I hear Britain being run down in any of those contexts, I always want to say, compared to where? You know, yeah, it's not perfect here, but it's, it's broadly speaking better here than it is anywhere else. Um, and so we've, Britain and, and therefore Scotland have been bastions of bright lights of, of, of freedom, the freedom to speak, the freedom to express views, the freedom to write, criticism of p political parties and governments and, and all the rest of it. And, and I think, I think uh, Jordan Peterson meant if, if, if that's happening in a place like Britain, if that's happening in Scotland, then it can happen anywhere. You know, it's not like, you know, you, it, it, it was the sort of hate crime bill you'd expect in some sort of tin pot dictatorship or a banana republic. You know, and there are maybe certain places on the planet that you might expect some authoritarian, totalitarian dictator to bring forward. But someone like Jordan Peterson was looking and saying, oh no, they're doing that in Scotland. And that his, his consternation, I thought, spoke volumes.